you got to see this. Two of God's generals who are now with the Lord, Peter Wagner and Steve Hill, share with us how America and the world is in serious bad condition and how you know, religion is hanging around the cross, but Christianity is getting on the cross. These generals are sending out a charge for this next generation. Check it out. As a church, we have to begin to wake up. I think about two of God's generals. Two of God's generals that, that nailed it. Both of them were with the Lord, Peter Wagner and Steve Hill, but it was this October that Peter Wagner went to be the Lord. And they were talking to us mm -hmm. and telling us that other nations are beginning to advance in the church and leaving America behind. We need to wake up. Let's go there now remember them. Steve Hill here with Peter Wagner. And I uh, just wanted to talk with you about uh, something that's on my heart right now. This is, uh, is going to be short, so what I want you to do is put your, your ears on, okay, and listen. Uh, because uh, uh, God's got a plan for every one of our lives. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind, there's uh, no doubt in uh, uh, Peter Wagner's mind that he's got a plan for our lives. Uh, but uh, oftentimes he sends messengers to speak to us, and uh, we have to pay attention. We have to stop long enough to listen. And so it's good to have you with us in our studio. Uh, Peter Wagner, you just bless my heart. I mean, I, I just touching you blesses my heart because you've written how many, how many books? Well, who's counting, but I've written 73. <laughs> oh, seven, 73. Okay, 73 to my 12, but I still got some years on me, okay? You do. So, uh, I just want to say that it's an honor for me to be with Steve Hill, a legend in our own time. Oh, you're and fine. so what a blessing it is you're, to be here. And I hope the people who are listening really have their hearts stirred with what we're going to say. Well, thank <laughs> you so much. Huh? It's, um, you, get around, you get around us, and, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of subjects we can discuss on, but I'm, I'm very limited, and we get calls from all over the world, and pastors want you to do this or do that, and, and uh, I go, this is what I'll come do, okay? And uh, I, just, I, I want to talk about a, a move of God, revival, uh, just for a few minutes. And uh, our nation right now is in terrible shape. Uh, our nation needs something besides religion. And uh, religion is hanging around the cross. Uh, Christianity is getting on the cross. Okay, religion is, and, and America right now is hanging around the cross. Okay, the, the cross has benefits. Okay, there's great benefits to Christianity. But Jesus got on it. And he talked to his disciples about getting on it. And so uh, revival to me is, is a little bit more, there's a little bit more sacrifice uh, involved in it. What should the message right now be from pastors, from prophets, from evangelists, from, from anyone who's, who's in the ministry or anyone who calls themselves a Christian? What, what should the message be? Well, you and I believe in revival. And I think that one of the keys to revival is Jesus' great commission. I mean, he, he so in, in Matthew, Matthew quotes Jesus as saying uh, to preach the gospel to every creature and he who believes and is saved will be saved and, um, and who is baptized. And so seeing the numbers of people being saved and baptized and then folded into churches and churches multiplying in a way that they, they multiply so fast that they change society, leads us into Matthew's quote of the Great Commission, where he tells us to make disciples of whole nations. But you're, you're talking radical yeah. stuff. I know. Okay? You, you, what, I'm, what I'm saying is... That's what bugs a, me, okay? Well, because how do I, okay? I, I'm, a, I'm an evangelist pastor, okay? You, you're, you're everything, okay? And you get out there and you try to, 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 get, to get that into somebody's heart, okay, is a whole other ballgame. Yeah, but it can. People can understand and listen and be born again and filled with the Spirit oh. and move out and do that. Well, you, you know I believe that, yeah. okay? You know I believe that because we, you know, we have fruit. There's, there's fruit that follows. But the, the, message, the, the message today, okay, in America is, um, uh, is, is needful, okay? There's, there's a, uh, I watch, okay, we're, we're right now in a, a political year, okay? And every year is a political year. But 
uh, I look at politicians and they get up and the one who has the, the, the fiercest voice, the one who has the most powerful message, the one who has this, this just undying passion, this unction, uh, is the one that seems to, uh, to, to slide into you know, the, 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 the voters' hearts. Mm-hmm. And so I, I'm looking at Christianity and I'm going, okay, the one who is passionate, the one who, who is able to, uh, at work, open their mouths and talk about the things of Christ rather than the things of, uh, of, of, the, of uh, just the Bible or, 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 or the just sections or, or portions of the Scripture. The whole gospel, that's... That's a, that's a concern of mine. Absolutely. And based on the cross of Jesus Christ and the blood that he shed and the, and the salvation that he brought, that is what pastors need. And not just ca- taking care of the sheep, but preaching, a go- preaching the gospel that will move through their sheep to those who are not saved and touch them with the gospel and bring them in and continue that process. If we do that, we can see whole cities transformed. Words Fitly spoken. <laughs> and I want to say to those pastors that are watching, if you're don't 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 be offended by anything, okay? Because I I'm an evangelist and I and, and a pastor and and I've traveled all over the world, okay? And I'll stand in front of a group of people and don't worry about offending somebody and standing up and saying that that they need to be a little bit stronger. With their message, they need to be a little bit more forceful when uh, when they they communicate with other people about the gospel because we're not making progress. I have some very strong opinions about that. Yes, and um, the what we see in America, as you've just said, Steve, can be very discouraging. I mean, I mean, we have dropped the ball terribly here in this country. In the last century, we didn't drop the ball. Mm-hmm. We hit, we, 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 the gospel was spreading. Mm-hmm. There were, people were strong in the Lord. There were people who were going to church. There were people who wanted to see the kingdom of God come. Now that we've gone into the 21st century, we've dropped the ball. But now what God has done is he's tossed the ball to some other countries, mm-hmm. like China. Okay. I mean, they're, uh, just, I mean, China, I used to think until last week that China had the greatest uh, church growth in the in the world. It did have the greatest harvest of souls from 1976, after the Cultural Revolution, with the uh, with the rural underground church, the greatest national harvest of souls in all history. Yeah. And um, I believe there are about 140 million Christians in China now, which would be 10 percent of the population. Mm-hmm. And I used to think India was second; that India was about there, but not quite there. Last week, I was with some Indian leaders. Who, who told me, even though I insisted, I, I cross-examined them, I, I almost told them they were wrong. They wouldn't back down. India is 25% Christian now. Mm-hmm. That is an amazing, amazing statistic. I'm gonna, I want to break in right now and, and, and say to this, this should not offend anyone. What this, this, this should challenge you. This should challenge me. Okay, uh, I'm a young man. Okay, and I'm speaking to many. You may say, "Well, you know, I'm, I'm this." Peter, you're you're up in I don't know 70s, 80s, or whatever. But the bottom line is, you just you got the fire of an 18 year old. Okay, <laughs> and and the vision, the vision, and you you see the world laid out like God sees it laid out. He goes, "Listen, if you don't take this and run with it, if you don't take this pure gospel that I've given you, and it's simple." The gospel is not complicated. If you don't take this and run with it, I'm going to pass the ball to somebody else. You're going to give it to somebody else. That's right. I'm going to give it to somebody else, and they're going to run with it. Exactly right. That's what happened. Let let me just ask you. We need more people swallowed by whales like Jonah. He was going to take it from (laughs) Jonah, but Jonah learned his lesson. He learned his lesson, and I think revival came out of all (laughs) that. That's right. And so sometimes, uh, and that's a, uh, some people need that, by the way. Some people need Saul of Tarsus experiences. Okay, which he needed. He he was on his way to really uh, uh, hurt some people. 
okay? And he needed to have an encounter. Some people need encounters with God that are violent, and other people need like Lydia experiences, just, you know, kind. She was a seller of purple cloth and just became a believer. And, and, and so if God passes the ball to China, it's because China's going, and India, I, I, India, we go there, and, and my goodness, it just, it's like you go, stop, stop. They want to run the cross so quick. They, they, you know, and, and, and they, they, want, they want to part. We have one lady named Leanna in India. We commissioned her an apostle three years ago. And um, this is with Jayan's network. And at that time, one of the reasons we commissioned her, because she was outstanding. She had planted 3,000 churches in North India. Uh-huh. Last week, Jayan told those of us who are on his board that she has now planted 5,000. I mean, 2,000 churches in, yeah. in two or three years yeah by a woman apostle, we need a few of those here in America. I lived, you know, uh, you, you're, you're, you speak Spanish, I speak Spanish. Oh, you lived in, was it Bolivia? Bolivia. Bolivia. Uh, and we lived in Argentina for years. And same thing. We, we would give an altar call. Someone would come forward, get saved. Next news you know, they planted three churches. Blink your eyes, they planted ten. Blink your eyes. And some North, <laughs> some North Americans down the road can't get anything off the road, the ground. Exactly right. And, and I'm going, something's wrong. Something's wrong with the picture. Let me just ask a couple more things. And uh, thank you so much for tuning in and just listening and letting God, God speak to you because there's a great revival coming, a great move of God coming. Tell, tell Jesus you, you want to be a part of it, okay? Would you do that? Tell him today that you want to be a part of it, that you don't want to be left behind, Okay. I don't want to be left behind. Okay, we talked about the you, the, the message. How, how about the the uh, the motive? Okay, because we have so many people entering the ministry. I talked to a young person the other day. I said, "What are you going to do?" He goes, "I'm going into the ministry," and and I said, "Define that." Okay, define that to me. What what you're going into the ministry? How old are you? He said, "I'm 23," and I said, "Oh, you're going into the ministry." Okay, nowadays. Okay, you can go into the ministry and uh, there's salary packages. Okay, a salary package, you know, is not something where a bunch of lettuce come. You know, this is, we're, we're talking about a salary package where, you know, do I get a car? Do I get a house? You know, how much do I get a year? This is what, you know, are you going to pay me for, you know, uh, and don't be offended again. Are you going to pay me for playing my instrument or all this? And, uh, you know, a lot of that, a lot of that's not wrong. It is wrong if you got people playing instruments that are heathen, okay? But this, 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 this motive, I know why I entered it, because I wanted everyone to have what I had. See, that's the difference. <clears throat> many, <clears throat> many people go into the motive with, with, um, for self. Their, mm-hmm. their, their focus is on their self, and you just described that very well. And there are too many people in the ministry who are in the ministry for what I can get out of it, even, even to get blessing out of it. Who's the blessing for? The blessing is for me. What you describe, Steve, is what I also believe. I believe that the motive for going into ministry is to allow the Spirit of God to use me to reach others, to help others fulfill the destiny that God has for their lives. And from that, let me, let me just, uh, just uh, ta- tag on to that. This is so important. This is, this is not all just a love feast, okay? When you, uh, when you uh, get into the ministry, okay, you're going to get hurt. Jesus, you, you're going you're gonna to have Judases, okay? Uh, we've, we've all had Judases, people that turn on you, people that, 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 that you, you, you pour into, and so you may have this motive when you first start that I'm going to, you know, ah, the ministry. And you get in there and things go great for a few years. But all those who live godly in Christ Jesus are going to suffer some persecution. Uh, I mean, if you live godly in Christ Jesus, okay? If you're not suffering persecution, you're probably not living godly in Christ Jesus. That means if you're not going through some type of struggles, there's a good chance you're soft, okay? 
there's got to be some type of passion. There's got to be something there. And so the, the, the motive, when, when, when I first got into ministry, one of the first, one of the first persons, uh, one of the first persons I ministered to killed themselves. Mm. And, um, and I, was, I was just in shock because I thought everyone was just going to be like me. They were, because I was radically saved out of drug addiction and alcoholism. I thought I was going to be radically saved. And instead, uh, I, I was sharing the gospel with people that, that didn't, didn't have the same uh, background and didn't have the same desires. Okay, last question. What one thing or two things is keeping you going right now uh, in, in, in this, this global outreach? Okay, and I personally believe that we're at the end of time. Okay, I believe, I believe the sand is at the bottom of the hourglass. Okay, what, what keeps you going? What keeps me going is what uh, I believe that God brought me into when I first got saved, the day I got saved. And um, the, the day I got saved, uh, I was like the Apostle Paul. I got saved and I got called to the nations the same night. And uh, so I, my calling is to help fulfill the Great Commission. And um, that's what keeps me going. The Great Commission is not fulfilled yet. And until the Great Commission is fulfilled, I am going to keep going. I'm only 81, but the Bible says in Genesis uh, 6-3 that we're supposed to live be 120. Mm -hmm. So that's my goal. Mm -hmm. I want to keep going. I want to do whatever part God gives me to fulfill the Great Commission until I'm 120 or die trying. So what you've done is the, uh, the, the seed that was planted in you, as a, you said, the, the, you know, Paul, the Saul of Tarsus, is in the conversion. I had the same type of conversion. That same type of seed was planted in me, okay? And years later, decades later, I mean, during the Brownsville revival and all, during the Argentine revival and all these revivals and, and we pastor in, in Dallas now, same thing at the church. It's, they say, people come up and say, you haven't changed. You haven't changed. It's because that seed, that seed, if it's an apple seed, that's going to produce an apple. Okay? And, and Steve Hill, and I can see Peter Wagner, is not going to get out there and in midstream, midstream, go, you know something. It's been good. Uh, no. <laughs> it's been good. But there's a whole different, there's a whole different avenue and there's a whole different teaching that's coming down the pike. And uh, uh, I mm -hmm. want to be a part of that. I want to thank you. Thank you, Steve. For, uh, for coming and being with us and, uh, and, and uh, being, a, being a challenge to... Uh, to, to many generations, okay? You, you, you cross over all these generations, which is really beautiful. And uh, uh, my generation, uh, I haven't given up on, okay? But the, my generation, uh, I'm pouring, uh, I, I, ha I have such a, uh, such, a, such a belief that there's a generation that's, that's rising right now that, that are, that ha are going to have that passion to see this world change for the right, glory of right. Christ. Thank Amen. you, brother. Bless you. I love you. Thank you. Thank I you love you too. With us. Thank you. That's two of God's generals that have gone to be with the Lord. You know, when I read God's generals, the first time I read it, I thought, it just stopped. Lord, what, what do we do from here? And he's like, well, it's our generation that needs mm -hmm. to carry the baton. Yeah. I want to pray for you right now. Maybe you're one of God's generals too. Father God, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to come. We thank you for these two men and this senator that, stand, that stood up and is standing up for righteousness, Lord God. We thank you for David Delighton and the investigation that took place. And we thank you for our viewers, God, that yes. partner with us. God, bless them. Encourage them this Christmas, Father God. Lord, we pray even right now, Lord God, that you would end abortion, send revival, send a third great awakening, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for watching VFN TV. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Also, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org.
Don't forget you can join us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Download our app and sign up for our newsletter, The Torch, at vfntv.com.